Happy Tuesday. One of the great joys of pastoral care is going to visit a newborn baby and the baby's parents. The sheer wonder of seeing a little baby who has safely been delivered is enough to fill one's heart with praise to God and thanksgiving. Being able to hold a tiny baby in one's arms is such a gift. I am deeply thankful to God for the safe birth of my English great-nephew Elijah Samuel to his parents Tom and Ruth Hayes. And my husband and David and I are so excited that we will, God willing, fly to England on August the 22nd and meet little Elijah for the very first time. Ruth was 10 days late and the process was nail biting as day after day passed. But finally, thanks be to God, their precious firstborn son was born early on July the 24th. Tomorrow, all being well, I will visit fairly new parishioners, Kyle and Ashley Settle, whose daughter was born the day after Elijah Samuel on Monday, July the 25th. Little Frances Lillian and her mum came home from the hospital last week and I will take a handmade newborn baby blanket and prayer card from St Mary's to welcome little Frances when I see her. What a privilege it is as a priest to share in such a precious time for this family. Well, as I reflect on newborns, I think of the revival tent that we will put up as we start a new year at St Mary's on September the 11th. For those of us who came to know God personally later in life, I was 18 when God came into my life, Perhaps we can remember the sense of becoming brand new inside with a changed heart, God's new loving presence surrounding us, a new hope, a new appreciation for the sudden technicolour beauty our new eyes can see in life and for new relationships of love in our church family. The singer Stevie Wonder expresses this beautifully in a love song called I'm New. And the chorus says, I'm new, new like the first day of spring, new like a nightingale that's just learned to sing. I'm new, new like the very start of dawn, like a child that's first born with your love. I'm new. Well, at this rather anxious and fra exhausting, fractured time in our nation and world, how we need God's Holy Spirit to revive us, to bring new life and open up new possibilities for joy and abundant life. Perhaps you know the story in Ezekiel chapter 37, when Ezekiel saw a valley of dry bones representing God's people of Israel. The only way for these dead bones to live is if the creator God causes sinews, flesh and skin to come upon the dry bones and then for God's vivifying breath to enter those bones to bring them to new life. Only God can accomplish this miracle of bringing new life to the dead just as God brought back from the dead his only son, Jesus, in the resurrection. We may feel at times as if the Episcopal Church and indeed all mainline denominations are decreasing in numbers and vitality, especially during the past two COVID years. The current Lambeth Conference in England of the bishops highlights the divisions in the Anglican Communion causing further hurt to the LGBTQIA plus communities who are already concerned after a Supreme Court Justice recently expressed the hope for the repeal of same-sex marriage. Can these dead bones live? Well, let's find out. May we draw closer to God, the renewer of all life, this month 
and in September to receive God's spirit of new life and new hope. Jesus is risen. We can be born again to new life. Thanks be to God. Happy Tuesday.